We have some big news that will affect a lot of people today. Save the date June 22nd is when the $2,200 stimulus checks are supposed to begin trickling out, as the Senate has now given immediate orders for their distribution. The long-awaited financial relief for beneficiaries of Social Security, SSI, SSDI, and VA benefits will feel the impact of this greatly. All the important information is going to be covered in this video. In this article, we will go over the details of these $2,200 stimulus checks, including who is eligible to receive them, when they will be distributed so you can prepare, how the money will be sent to those who receive Social Security, SSI, SSDI, or VA benefits, and what to do if you haven't gotten your payment on time. To top it all off, we'll answer frequently asked questions to make sure you're well-informed to handle this crucial financial update. For those who receive Social Security, SSI, SSDI, or VA benefits, the Senate voted yesterday to authorize a fresh round of stimulus payments with a maximum value of $2,000 to help alleviate the economic burden caused by the prolonged recession. The Relief Act, a legislative package, was approved by a simple majority vote in each chamber with Vice President Harris using her position to break a tie. It is anticipated that President Biden would sign it into law as soon as next week once it reaches his desk. Direct payments of $2,200 are being offered to help alleviate the effects of high inflation and increasing living costs, which have eroded the purchasing power of tens of millions of Americans in the last year. The data already stored by the IRS and the Social Security Administration will be used to determine the payments. There will be no need to submit any extra paperwork or apply for the funds, unlike prior stimulus rounds. But there are loopholes that let you submit an amended return and get the right amount if your income has changed a lot since you last filed your taxes. The whole $2,200 will be paid out to most qualified beneficiaries. If your income is more than $75,000 for a single filer or $150,000 for A. Married couple filing jointly, the amount starts to phase off. Any income over such levels results in a 5% reduction to the payment amounts. This means that a single filer whose AGI is $90,000 would only get $1,700 instead of $2,200. This bill would not pay married couples with an AGI of more than $300,000 or individuals with an AGI of more than $175,000. An additional $500 would be added to the household's payment for each dependent kid under the age of 19 and for each full-time student under the age of 24. The Relief Act now specifies a date of July 15th, 2018 as the possible start date for the distribution of the first payments. But that first payment date is only the beginning of a planned gradual rollout over a few weeks. Around the middle of July, those who are eligible for SSDI and SSI will likely be among the first to receive their benefits. In the two or three weeks that follow, those who are eligible for Social Security retirement benefits or who get payments from the VA should expect to receive their funds. It is anticipated that the distribution speed will be significantly faster compared to the first two stimulus waves in 2020 and 2020 21. For one thing, these federal beneficiaries' payment methods, addresses, and bank details are already on record with the IRS and other relevant organizations. First in line to get their $2,200 checks should be eligible persons who have set up direct deposit with the IRS. Those receiving physical checks in the mail will probably be near the end of the disbursement timetable. In a clause pertaining to payments, to deceased individuals who were receiving federal benefits in 2023 is one distinctive feature of this new stimulus measure. The measure is different from earlier stimulus rounds that demanded the return of those funds this one is this time around, up to $2,000. It can be retained by the surviving spouse or qualified children of a beneficiary who passed away in 2023 or 2024 to help cover burial or funeral expenses. Although this bill has already cleared the House and Senate, there are still several processes and possible obstacles to overcome before funds may be dispersed. The first step is for President Biden to officially sign it into law in the near future. But now that the White House has said they're on board with the measure, it's only a formality. The United States Department of the Treasury and the Internal Revenue Service also need to revise their payment procedures and systems to accommodate the revised eligibility and disbursement standards. The small holdup until payments begin to go out in the middle of July may be attributable, in part, to that procedure. Last-minute legal challenges might halt or postpone the implementation of this new stimulus program. There has been an abundance of both support for and opposition to the new $2,200 stimulus package, as is typical of any substantial expenditure plan in the present political atmosphere. Further stimulus expenditure according to 
Republican opponents would make inflation much higher and the economy even worse in the long run. They advocated for more comprehensive tax reform in order to raise Americans' take-home earnings. On the other hand, Democrats argued that helping the elderly and people with disabilities is a good use of taxpayer dollars, pointing out that inflation has been skyrocketing for the last two years and that cost-of-living adjustments have not been able to keep up. The Senior Citizens League and other advocacy organizations worked tirelessly to secure what they deemed as an essential safety net for the millions of aging Americans who were slipping behind. Over the next several weeks, this new stimulus program will be implemented and recipients will likely have numerous concerns regarding the specifics, including when they may expect their payments and how they can pay for them. There will certainly be an influx of requests for payment status updates to government institutions such as the Internal Revenue Service, the Social Security Administration, and Department of Veterans Affairs. Hopefully, they have established channels of communication and clear instructions to deal with the influx of customers. The eligibility requirements for those receiving several government assistance could be unclear. A person receiving both retirement benefits from Social Security and disability payments from the VA is one. Example. Legislative standards must be crystal clear about the treatment of such cases when calculating amounts due. The best way to ensure that no worthy receivers are shortchanged is to earn money while giving the maximum reward. There are a lot of payments going out at once which could affect delivery times. The processing and distribution of approximately 60 million Social Security and disability payments within a restricted deadline poses a logistical difficulty. In order to keep everything running properly, the IRS will probably have to schedule mailings and send out more employees. It will also be vital to have self-service payment tracking tools available online and easily accessible throughout this period. In the long run, this $2,200 will serve as a stimulus payment in 2023. Legislators and campaigners would surely want to turn it into an annual payment if high inflation continues into 2024. Historically, Social Security cost of living adjustments have been slow, reducing the purchasing power of monthly benefit payments during periods of fast price increases. A $2,200 raise will assist in the near term, but without a longer-term adjustment to reflect actual. Cost of living rises, the disabled and elderly may continue to struggle to make ends meet. Legislators will certainly hear from groups like ARP and others who want to see this stimulus gift become a yearly tradition. More broadly, the economy could get a reasonable consumption boost if over $100 billion were pumped into the pockets of recipients. The demand side effects of the stimulus will likely be smaller than in prior rounds when payments were distributed to everyone and consumer spending was lower, according to most economists. Instead of going toward additional spending, a significant chunk of the stimulus money might end up helping people with fewer financial buffers, such as those receiving Social Security or disability payments. Although the $2,200 payments will provide much-needed relief to millions of Americans who are struggling financially, they are only a small part of the solution to the current stagnant inflation. To alleviate the underlying inflationary pressures, it will be essential to implement legislative measures that target supply-side bottlenecks, modify regulations to release more output, and provide incentives to restock the workforce. Combined with any upcoming changes to strengthen fixed incomes can offer a little reprieve. A more all-encompassing combination of fiscal, monetary, and legislative measures to increase productivity and potential output is necessary to get on board with the economic ship. Improving the economy's overall production capacity is the only way to achieve long-term stability, reduced inflation, and healthy growth rates. The $2,200 stimulus payments are a good first step toward helping those who need them, but they are only a small part of the solution to the economy's present instability. Other measures are still in the works. As more information about the implementation and effects of this most recent economic stimulus program becomes available in the coming weeks and months, be sure to check back for updates.